Hey there, this is teacher Elizabeth with another art tutorial for you. Today we're going to be working with Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. This is a fantastic celebration with all kinds of beautiful symbolism that reflects on those that we've lost to the spirit world. This holiday reminds us to embrace the lives of those close to us who have passed on. If you have been fortunate and have not had this experience yet, I invite you to make this artwork for someone you may have lost contact with, someone you would like to reconnect with or re-remember. But before we get started with the art project, I'd like to show you this video clip so you can see the history of Day of the Dead. The ancient Aztecs believed that the souls of their ancestors went to a place called Mictlan, protected by the goddess Mictecasihuatl. These souls would return to Earth to visit their living relatives during a festival dedicated to her honor. This custom lives on today as El Día de los Muertos. Between October 31st and November 2nd, families make ofrendas, or offerings, to their ancestors that include the four elements, water, wind, earth, and fire. They decorate the graves of their loved ones with the Aztec marigold, hoping that its vibrant color and aromatic scent will guide the spirits back to our world. Monarch butterflies are said to contain the souls of the departed during the three-day fiesta. Filled with pan de muertos, atole, champurrado, piñatas, and the iconic Calavera Catrina, El Día de los Muertos celebrates the lives of the deceased and encourages participants to recognize death as a natural part of the human experience. All right, now that we've got a little history, I just wanted to show you an example of something that I made for today's project. It's a sugar skull, and you're going to be creating one of your own that reflects on the symbolism that reminds you of that special person. As for art supplies today, you will need the colored pencils and paper, and then a hard copy of a blank skull template. You can find that skull template at this address, and you can download it and print it. Otherwise, you can Google image an empty sugar school template and print it. All right, the other thing you're going to need are references that relate to the pictures that pair with the characteristics of that person who's going to be the subject matter of our art project today. So with my mom, I chose tulips, a windmill, and a crow. I didn't end up using the crow in the final artwork and I wanted to include this so you would know that you may choose some images or ideas, change your mind later and create something totally different, which is just how it works when you're being creative. All right, to get started, we need to start with a brainstorming session. Grab a sheet of scratch paper and write down who you wanna make this artwork about and three or more things that remind you of that person and or words that you could come up with that symbolize that person. After you figure out your ideas, your three or more ideas, then you need to pair a picture with each one of your ideas. So for example, I chose my mom and what symbolizes her to me are tulips, windmills, and a crow. I then went to Google Images and printed out those pictures. Okay. The next step is I want you to do a couple of quick studies. Quick studies help you to plan out what your final project is going to look like. Taking time to plan will save you heartache for later, so please don't skip this step. On a separate sheet of paper, you're going to draw two boxes. Inside those boxes, you will draw an upside down egg shape that symbolizes the skeleton head. Then you will take the imagery that you either printed or you're using from your imagination and start placing them on top of those skulls, those empty skull templates. That way you can practice what stuff looks like before you commit to a final project. Once you come up with the design that you like, I want you to place it next to you so you can refer to it. You won't be held prisoner to that original sketch. You can change anything you want, but it's helpful to utilize the work that you put in initially to plan out the design of your sugar skull. So what I'm doing here is all freehand. Off camera, I've got the picture of the tulips that I'm using as a reference. If I don't want a freehand, I can put pencil on the back of a picture like I'm doing in the slide right now, flip it over, place it where I want it to be on my sugar skull, and trace it. This keeps you from having to freehand anything. The one caveat with that is you may need to 
print things several times to get them to be the right size for your picture. Meaning you have to get a print that is the right size to fit on inside of the sugar skull. Now the rest of my project I go ahead and freehand. I ended up making it feel like the tulips were in an environment. So that's why I added the sky and the horizon line. In addition, I started adding details and decoration that have nothing to do with reality and have everything to do with just design. I want you to be freed up in this process where you're not worried about things necessarily looking real. You can turn things into a design or pattern. There needs to be no reality. I mean, the whole thing can be a design if you feel like it. And that design can symbolize those different aspects of that person that you've lost or the person that you're trying to re-remember. There's really no right or wrong with your design. Just make sure that you fill it with shapes and you think about the person that you're making it for so that the project has meaning for you. In my example, I drew some symbols that represented my mom, but then I filled them in with pattern. All right, now we go for color. The only thing I'm going to instruct you on with the color is please color in the background first. That way, if you accidentally color over something of the design that is not the background, it's no big deal because you will do the background first and then the design second. So any mistakes you might have made coloring in the background which overlapped onto the design, you can just fix when you color in the design. Make sure to use lots of color. This holiday, which like the Mexican culture that it is celebrated in, is full of color. All right, the next thing I want you to do is to send a message to this person. So inside the eyes and the mouth and the nose, I want you to write a message. You could also use more symbols, like I put the heart in the nose and on top of the teeth, but definitely add a little text to your project so that you can share how you feel about this person that you're celebrating. All right, you've done it. You've completed another art tutorial. I hope you learned something new. I hope you were able to reflect on someone super important to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be creative today.